All right. How's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. I got my co-host, Robert Beninati. Hello, everyone. We're going to talk about police. Uh, one of my friends who does cybersecurity, we're having cigars with him last week, was it? About two weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, and we're talking about different things related to security, police, military, all these things. And he knew me like 20 years ago uh, when we were doing a film based on me, and we had a lot of different things, including guns and all these things, if I had permits for him and all this different stuff. But he asked me, uh, you know, or I guess it just came up when traveling a lot, what I went through as far as when I'd get pulled over, because he knew I drove a lot. And depending on what city or state or country I was in, I told him when I get pulled over, what helped me out a lot with police is I pull over and I stick my hands out the window. And I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, my buddy, who's actually the chief of police in, one, in Illinois, mentioned I do that, especially because years ago I used to carry a firearm. So I'd stick my hands out. They would come up. I'd be like, hey, I got a firearm. And then they would, ex- you know, then it would start from there. But no matter what I was doing, uh, it's no matter where I was at, that seemed to really ease the police and set something off in a different tone mm-hmm. than me just pulling over and looking at them and just starting it from there. So what I'm going to talk about, Robert, is what's going on, what he thinks regarding the police just in general, the way people treat them now. Yeah, it's funny. You know, all these videos I've been watching on Reels and TikTok, right? Um, and guys, we're, we're not taking sides here either way. We, it's just uh, it's just a show here. We're just talking, right? Um, but what's what I've seen very common is how people are taking such a and and I get it at certain points of what you know what's happened, and we only see the stories of you know police aggression or police brutality, right? Sure. But there's uh, there's a whole bunch of other good cops, amazing cops, right? Yeah. Um, but what I see is people right away recording and being smart asses. Yeah. You know, uh, they don't lower the window all the way. Um, right away, we, well, I don't answer questions. Kind of baiting uh, them. Yeah. Aggravating. It's like you're, you're poking. Yeah. You're poking at it. Of course. You, know, you have to understand these people are have their lives, you know. Every aligned. second. They're pulling up to a car that they don't know. They get shot at. They could, you know. So understand where they're coming from, right? They just have mm-hmm. to protect themselves. Yes, there are some, you know, idiot cops out there, you know, that have... In any profession, to a certain degree. I mean, come on. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we're all people at the end of the day. Yeah, and right? sometimes it's just a bad day. Him making that, a mistake. Yeah. If right? we all videotaped everything we did, I'm, I can assure you there's a we lot of things we say, stuff, do, yeah. and, right? So, but but just the way they bait him, you know, the, the way they, they poking at them right away. You know, I don't answer questions. I don't need to answer that. You know what? You know... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't have to give you my ID and you know, it's just provoking. It's just making it worse yeah. instead of making it better. They're making it worse. You know, there's nothing wrong with record it, record whatever is happening for your own protection, but going the extra mile and just making it that much tougher. I don't agree with that part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and give the, give the cop a chance. Yeah, you know he's doing his job. He's just pulling you over for whatever the reason is. Ask him why. He'll tell you why, yeah. and take it from there. You know it's all paperwork you have to give him and provide. But um, you can make I, it good or bad a lot of yeah, times. Yeah, but Let's I see face these it. are the people that are against, of course, yeah, the police. Mm-hmm. And then if they have a break in, somebody's about to kill them, yeah. then the first people they call is nine one one, right? Of course, and then they want service right away. Mm-hmm. So pick and choose. Which one is it? You know. Yeah. You need them or you don't need them, you know, at the end of the day. I've said throughout my life, because some of my buddies are cops, some are not. um, I think the toughest job, well, the military and the police to me are the top, like, guys in our country now. I didn't necessarily respect them when I was younger. Now I give them the utmost respect. I'd say military and then police. And then maybe even firemen are in there as well. Mm -hmm. Can you you imagine? it's It's a tough job. It, it is. It's all, I always said, the to me, that one of the toughest jobs, if, as far as just the United States, is a profession just locally, I guess, being a policeman. Every time you get a call, it's bad news. Everywhere you go, it's going to usually be because something wrong happened. Yeah, you, so, don't, you don't call 911 to tell them I have donuts here, come and eat. Exa- you, you call them because there's can, something happening, right? So that's yeah. the only call they get. It's 
It's bad news. Yeah. Everything is a problem in their life. And you wonder why they're upset a lot of times. I think one of the reasons is because look at what they got to deal with. A lot of people's behavior. Mm-hmm. Plus, they're being also a lot of times maybe set up. Now, I'm not saying you get pulled over a lot of times. They got to give you tickets and maybe you were speeding where you're not. I'd say most of the time we were speeding. I think a lot of times when we have issues with cops, not always, and I've had issues in clubs. I've had my string of arrests and have my issues with cops. But at the end of the day, I can assure you, most of the time, my behavior is what got me there. Not the cop. Hmm. If the cop's involved, it's on me. I'm just saying. Listen, the cops are like, like, like we just said. They're people. They're just humans, right? But when you have a different attitude, I mean, you're, yeah. you're going to get what your attitude di- dictates, right? And that goes anywhere. You go to DMV. You go to any type of county yep. situation, right? And you're requesting paperwork documentation you need help with something if you're nice they could have a bad day imagine you have a hundred people coming up to you all day long with attitude what do you think your attitude their attitude is going to be sitting behind that desk right yeah so now you come in how's your day talk to them they're human you know i see you know it looks like you're stressed you know or you know just talk to them as a human be nice they will happily take care of you but if you come in with a with an a Most of the, absolutely, you're going to get the same thing back. If we're at Starbucks, usually, or if I was at a Starbucks in an airport and a girl refused to even serve a cop, and usually if I see cops in a Starbucks, I always try to buy their drinks. Or if I see any cop anywhere or military, my mother taught me, you let them step in front of you. So they're always kind of have the right. They're, they're always number one. That's just, If I'm in an well, you, airplane. You, you let them go ahead of you, especially on like Starbucks, let them get their coffee and get out because if they get a call, they have to go. Yeah. I've been on airplanes where I've been in first class because I had so many points or just in a better seat. And I would see a military dude there. I'm like, you can sit here. And he's like, no, thank you or whatever, especially out of Georgia or Atlanta. There's so many there. I'm like, no, dude, you sit here. What am I? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's. It, it, I don't care what age they are. If you treat people a lot of times with respect, you'll get that back. You'll get it back. Yeah. So I, if you're going to disrespect anyone, uh, anyone, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, and you can't loop all cops. And believe me, I was a guy who was anti-cop. Growing up with a lot of Italians from Chicago that were doing a lot of things illegally, friends, family members, colleagues, we were kind of programmed where you, we're all kind of one to a certain degree because we're all from the same neighborhood and some guys become cops, some become criminals, some are in the middle, some are all this. Mm -hmm. But we all kind of learned how to get along. I do think when you leave that element, say I came to Florida, now I'm anti-cop in Florida because I'm, they're calling me city slickers or uh, good fellows and all this shit. And I'm calling them a redneck and a hillbilly. Like that's our mindset when Mm -hmm. we're younger, like just kind of both being an asshole to one another. And that's what they call me and what I'd call them. Yeah, you just keep building that negativity. For what? What is all this for? Again, self-awareness, man. If you have a problem with cops a lot of times, first, I'll say this like my father always says to me. If you're always around cops or being busted or being harassed, whatever you're doing isn't for you. (laughs) You're not good at what you're doing. Common denominator. You're the problem. You're the problem, right? If If you've ever been arrested or go to jail, go there and talk. Everyone's innocent. Right. I'm like, if you were hip, let's put it this way. It's in the movie, bad boys. If you are hip at what you do and anything in life, uh, well, let's put it this way. If you're in jail, you're not hip because if you were, you wouldn't be there. Right. So you have to look at it from that perspective. Anyways, that's just something I want to throw in there. <laughs> so anyways, what else, Robert? We're at eight, nine minutes here already. Just, um, again, just be nice. You know, you'll, you'll get back what you put out. I've been in neighborhood situations, too, where I grew up in Chicago. So one neighborhood would pull us over. We'd ha- get harassed. And then in my neighborhood, the cops would pull over the other neighborhood because it could be if, whatever nationality or whatever. People want to protect their communities a lot of times. I've been involved in seeing that. But let's face it. I don't live in that. And a lot of people may still. But a lot of the problems going on now, I think, aren't always necessarily race-related or they're not... Uh, I don't, in my opinion, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm like, you're a total asshole. That's really a lot of the problem. I and don't see is it. it. Is it cultural or is it by state? Because I, you know, here, you know, in New York, it's, it's rare that you see people, you know, coming across or sitting across the, the sub, you know, in the subway or in the bus or just, and nodding at you like, hey, you know, hi, or good morning in general, anywhere. 
you know, it's straight to the point with an attitude, right? Um, and then you come to Florida and everything is like, before the conversation starts, there's a, there's a greeting, right? Yeah. Um, you know, the good morning, how are you? Yeah. You know, and then they get into what they need. Um, you think that's cultural or the big cities only do that? I get pulled over in a lot of cities and people I know are profiling me if I'm wearing a leather coat or by the way I, my face looks or maybe my my disposition and that's like if a black dude or wh- whoever pulls me and I'd be like how they're pulling me over because I know what I like they I may be breaking the law I may be speeding I may have taken a right turn or whatever the case may be but even going through checkpoints in California I think I told you th- you know you go through there they pull you aside or they question you even in the airport I'm always being questioned a lot of times I could say, hey, they're treating me this way because I'm American or if I'm in Canada or if I'm, they're treating me this way because they know I'm, I'm a Yankee, hypothetically, from my ex. So a lot of times it's just, I think, people wanting to protect people from bad guys and they may think you're a bad guy. I just think it's, it, it is what it is. I don't know how else to explain it in that sense. I can't say it's because I'm Italian or I'm black or I'm Chinese or I look like this or because I wear a leather coat or I look like I'm carrying a gun. Do I look, what am I doing in this city or state at four in the morning driving? Because uh, when I lived in California, I used to get pulled over all the time, especially at night. And they would even say stupid things like, are you texting? I'm like, no, I'm not. Te-. Like just to like, just to pull me over. And right. But I'll tell you something. If you got shit to hide, it's kind of on you because I usually am. I said it the other day. Well, then again, if you if you don't have anything to hide and they're asking you and kind of profiling you, yeah, um, it is what it is. You be calm and don't be against it, you know. Because if they have to profile, for example, in an airport, right, and they they stop you and question you for whatever reason, yeah, okay, they're somewhat profiling you, right, for whatever reason. They profile everybody, right? But they do. And then if something happens on the on on the plane or in the airport, yeah. then everybody's on the cop. Why? Well, why didn't you stop them if you saw something exactly. suspicious? Well, because then if I do that, then um, you know, it does uh, either being way. Being racist, being you know, discriminating, or whatever the case is. So you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if the if you don't. It, it's it's just. It, I don't have people anything. People have an edge on themselves. Just keep yeah. Keep calm. Just let it be. Do what you got to do and move on. The faster you just keep calm, answer the questions, move on, get on you know, get on your plane, do what you got to do. If you're driving a car and you got drugs in there and you get pulled over, it's on you. I'm just, if you have a gun and it's illegal and you get pulled over or they hit you, it's on you again. If you got nothing to hide a lot of times, most likely nothing's going to happen. If you get pulled over and you have drugs in the car and they're gonna, and, they, and you act suspicious, it's going to get worse. Remember what Dean said though? He's like, Rich, I stick my hands out and I get out of the car. He's like, Rich, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, I pop my trunk. I say, open my glove compartment. I tell him, open my suitcase, do whatever the hell you want to do. Most of them look at me, run my license and let me go. Because I've abided. I've kind of put the brakes. I, I threw that all on them. Even if I have a firearm in the old days, I'm like, here's my here's my license. Here's my firearm. I had it prepared. There's my gun. I'm stepping away from it. Do whatever you got to do. You know what's gotten, gotten me away? I haven't been stopped too often. But I remember the last time I got stopped, I the first thing, I, I kept my hands on the wheel. Mm. And as soon as he came out, how you doing, officer? Just to let you know, I do have a firearm in the vehicle. Mm-hmm. He concentrated more on that. Mm-hmm. He, I think he forgot why he pulled me over in the first place. Yep. And then he checked that, make sure everything, gave him my um, um, my permit for carrying. Yep. Everything was fine. Where is it? It's there. How? You know, whatever. And I think I, I took off. We, you know, yeah. I left, and that was right. it. Like he, he, here you go. Thanks. I think he forgot. He got so nervous with yeah. that, and I, didn't, I want to put him at ease. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, kept still, answered his questions, and I took off. I left, and he never actually gave me the ticket. A lot of problems are, you're the problem again. Is your Do you have insurance when you get pulled over? A lot of people don't. They want to take an attitude with a cop. Is your tags That's your valid? That's problem not having insurance. What would you say? That's your problem if you don't have insurance. It's all, a why, lot why of them are issues. The <laughs> a lot of them have warrants out for their arrest. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, if you're not breaking the law... You have really not that much to be afraid, well, in let's my say, opinion. Okay, so let's say you have no, none of that. You yeah. don't have drugs. You weren't speeding. Yeah. No gun. Yeah. No warrants. Yep. You're you're the excellent citizen, right? Then why take that aggression against the cop right away? Why take that, you know, why have that attitude mm-hmm. 
and just make things work? What are you trying to prove? That's my question, you know. Well, I think a lot of people are having a bad day. Sometimes they get pulled over. They don't want a ticket. They don't want to pay 250 bucks. They don't think they were speeding. They think they're a victim. They think they're whatever. They're being profiled. There's all these things. So they're going to take a bad attitude. Back to my father. He used to say, when you address the, when the, when you address the cop, you want to make them comfortable. You don't want to make them uncomfortable. Even my buddy who's the chief of police and other guys, they'd say even rich, like say you have a workout bag. He's like, if, if, I'm a cop. I'm going to say, what's in the workout bag? Is there anything in there that can hurt me? Or is there anything in there that's illegal? Mm -hmm. You know, I can say you, they don't may, they may not have the right to look in there, right? They probably don't. They don't. I, I, okay. But I'll, I'll take out the bag and open it and say, here's everything. Like, I don't even, I try to constantly make it comfortable for them. Not being like, uh, you know, like, I don't know what's in there or, you know, because they don't know. You could stick your hand in there. There could be a needle in there. Mm -hmm. They don't know if there's a goddamn bomb in there. Yeah. They don't know anything. But if you make the environment better instead of worse, it's going to go a long way. I don't care what anybody tells me. Yeah. That's my theory. And this is coming from a guy who used to be for cops all the time. Oh, my goodness. We're at 1%. percent we got to kill this. All right, my friend. Uh, that's all today. I'm at richtolenza.com. Robert's off the grid. <laughs> <laughs> off the grid.com or just off the grid? That's just new. Watch these guys.